What's going on guys? Quinn69 here. How are you guys doing today? Get excited as this is going to be your first 2.3 monk guide I'm making for you guys. Uh, the main reason I'm making this particular guide first as I'm not using any of the OP stuff that monks have on the PTR. Um, and it actually is the fastest back we've found for Torment X farming. So this is a pure Torment X farming set. It's not designed for greater rifts. And if anything, um, this set is going to get buffed. Even though it's already the fastest set that monks have for farming Torment X. If you guys don't know, this is a new monk set, the Yuliana set here. Um, we'll just quickly go over it real fast. Um, so the two set, every third hit of your generators, your spirit generators that is, applies exploding palm to everything. We don't really use that uh, with this build. Uh, the four set, your seven sided strike does seven times more damage. Uh, we, we're not going to be really using that with this build as well. Um, it's mainly the six set we're going to be using. Your seven sided strike detonates your exploding palm. Oh my god. So just, just remember, that's what the set is. We're going to go into a rift. We'll just show you guys how we abuse it. We'll show you how quick this is right now. So get excited. This is, a, I mean, you're going to be like, what the hell, Quentin? How are you going to survive? You only have 16 million toughness. You're going to see. You're going to see the techniques here, guys. You're going to see the techniques. This is a pretty old trick. You guys don't remember. Um, so you see here, second I come into the rift, I press him inside a strike, and there's gold dropping everywhere. Okay, look at my toughness now. It's at 2.6 billion. It's at 2.6 billion. That is because I have a Boon of the Hoarder um, legendary gem equipped, and I've combined that with the gold wrap. This is an old trick. If you just this in some previous builds, I think oh, dating all the way back to maybe Season 1, whenever Boon of the Hoarder was first kind of implemented, but people have been doing this. And, um, yeah, this is basically what allows us to stack enough damage to make the Yuliana set really, really powerful. Um, you know, so you see here, I can just literally AFK Molten and TX, which is... Which would basically, do, if you didn't have that, uh, you would be dead. It would just one shot you. It would just, it would completely destroy you. Torment X is about a GR45, so, um, you know, stuff does hurt quite a lot. You might be noticing something kind of weird. Uh, you might be like, hang about. I thought you said you had to hit three times in order to get your, um, you know, exploding palms up. But I'm just kind of running in. As you can see, I'm just running in. I'm pressing seven side of strike, and everything's getting EP'd, and it's just kind of blowing up. That is because um, I'm using the Carnage Cube, and I have a Mad Stone inside that bad boy. So the, what what a Mad Stone does is it uh, basically it makes your seven sided strike apply exploding palm. Um, so you can imagine the six set of Yulianas, you know, your seven sided strike detonates your exploding palm. So um, I'm, I'm obviously applying exploding palm, and then it's becoming it's detonating simultaneously. And then I've also got Gundo Gears on, so Gundo Gears are the bracer. You know, when exploding palms on death explosion, it basically it, it spreads exploding palms. So I press seven sided strike, it detonates, something dies, it spreads using the gundo gear, and on top of that, the mad stone is applying EPs. So you, there's just infinite exploding palms, basically. That, 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 that's how it works. That ha that's how it works. And then we're just stacking a ton of damage, a ton of damage, and combining it with the um, you know the the gold immunity. So we, we've got like that, you know, the crazy toughness with the crazy damage, and we're just... God, we're, ba we're basically, we're basically Goku. We're basically Goku. That's the, that's why we're calling it the Goku spec. The gameplay itself is really good. Um, obviously because all you gotta do is pick up gold. Um, you have got a little bit of a rotation. Um, you will need, you will need to use Desert Shroud, like whenever it's up. I mean, as you can see, because I'm, I'm talking and I'm kind of distracted, I'm, I'm not doing a very good job of that. You do need to use Desert Trap when it's up. Um, you want to auto attack every now and then. So when I say auto attack, I mean you've got to use Crippling Wave every now and then to proc your focus and restraint. Um, and then you just step inside a strike. Apart from that, um, if, as long as you just pick up gold, you're never going to die. And everything else will pretty much just melt as you just run around, um, you know, doing your little doing your little rotation here. You can also activate your um, Mantra if you want to prior to pressing step inside a strike. It's, you actually have enough spirit to get away with that, basically. But that's that's really that's really getting pretty advanced. That's getting pretty advanced. Oh, this is going to be a juicy map here. This is going to be a juicy map. Outdoor maps are the best for this uh, for this particular setup, obviously because outdoor maps mean you have density, and density um, obviously scales really well with gun, I guess. Now check this out. Oh my god. Oh my god. The juice. 
Channeling Pylon doesn't really do much for us, uh, as we have Ingyom on, and Ingyom's up the majority of the time, so it's kind of like just having Ingyom. But, using the Nemesis Braces to spawn more elites creates more density, which means we complete the rift faster. And obviously, because uh, in patch 2.3, you don't have to do trials anymore, you just fa you farm rifts. You just, you're just literally doing rifts to get blood shards and to get great rift keys. Um, so you're trying to complete the rifts as fast as possible now. Um, you're just going to close the rifts straight away in 2.3. You're not going to, um, because a lot of people will, uh, you know, on live service right now, when they do rifts, they'll do a full clear because they want to get the most value out of their keystone. Uh, but that's no longer the case. It's now just kind of go out, blast the rifts as fast as possible. Um, this spec here, solo, so solo clears. Uh, I was doing some runs before. I did like six runs and I'm um, tying them all and it averaged out. Every single run was under five minutes. Um, you know, lot quickest runs, like three minutes, 50 sort of thing. That's like really, really quick runs, so with a really good map. Um, I'm pretty sure monks are one of the fastest classes for doing this. I don't I don't know what other kind of class what speed other classes are doing, but I mean um, as you can see here, obviously the you know the way that Gano Gears and Exploding Palm works, we're really, really, really efficient at doing a lot of AoE damage. The build does lack a tiny bit of single target. You guys will see when we get to the Rift Guardian. Actually I'll try I'll show you a cool little trick you can do on the Rift Guardian actually. Hopefully hopefully it'll line up perfectly. What are we up to now? Okay, let's see if we can do this trick for you guys. Let's see if I can do this trick. Okay, we're gonna look for our... Okay. This convention is lightning damage right now. We're just gonna wait, we're gonna wait, we're gonna wait. Okay, it's physical damage right now. It means cold's coming up in two seconds there. Okay, he's ready. Here we go. Cold damage, exploding farm. Boom! Boom! Get one shit. Uh, that was basically, I just my convention of the elements there. So I just waited uh, for the cold to come up. And I pre it multiplies my damage by 200%. And it kind of just one-shots the, uh, the Rift Guardian in there. It's pretty cool. This is PTR, so I don't need blood shards. I'm just going to leave all that stuff on the ground. Hopefully you guys um, enjoyed the little demo there. That's the demo showing you guys how the build works. Obviously, it was kind of like not the fastest run because I'm kind of talking smack and showing you guys stuff as we're going. Um, but that's the build in action. We're going to show you all the skills and everything I'm using and the gear. So if you guys want to see that, now stick around. Stick around, boys. So we'll start off with skills. Uh, we're using 7 Sided Strike, Sustained Attack, it's hands down the best rune, uh, there's no, nothing comes close to this as it's literally less than half the cooldown, and obviously because of the way the 6 set works, it detonates Exploding Palms, and you've got your Madstone on, it applies Exploding Palms, and Exploding Palm does your damage, not 7 Sided Strike, um, this is just obviously the best choice, there's nothing that even comes close. So don't even, don't even try, don't even try. The good thing about it is it's actually physical, and because we're using um, convention of the elements, uh, what it means is we have a, a, a elemental types that spread out, so whenever there's a physical proc, which I think comes after lightning, there we go, physical, that would give me a lot of single target damage on a Rift Guardian, and then it goes cold, and then we, then we get, because we're using cold exploding palm, you know, so we've got more coverage with our convention. Anyway, as far as uh, mantras go, if you're playing solo, I would go overall. If you're playing in a group, I would go Annihilation. If you're hardcore, I would consider going Agility, just for the survivability, so you, you know, for your, for your group mates so they don't die and stuff. Um, as far as uh, Dashing Strike goes, for maximum, like, you know, maximum speed, Way of the Falling Star, like 100%. Uh, if you're playing hardcore, if you, you know, you think you need a bit of survivability, which you probably don't, let's be honest here. Um, because you've got gold wrap and you've just got a billions of toughness. You could use blinding speed, but yeah, where are the falling star for maximum movement speed? Um, as far as epiphany runes go, um, you can, you, you're pretty much just going to stick to Desert Shroud. Uh, you don't need insight, because if you press Desert Shroud when it's, whenever it's up, you're always going to have enough spirit to 7 side to strike. It's as simple as that. And you've also got a generator there, like, you, you really don't need, um, insight. Um, uh, you can, you, I was playing around with some other runes before, um, this is actually a really good one, because you, you don't need the damage reduction as well, because you have gold wrap, um, this rune here is actually pretty cool, you can fire out little fireballs, right? <laughs> but when you seven side a strike, what happens is, um, the little fire clones break all the destructibles, and you actually get more loot, um, so I actually noticed, uh, you know, getting a little bit more loot, and you can shoot out little Goku fireballs, Oh yeah, it's worth it boys, worth it. But yeah, if you want to play serious and be efficient, probably just go do the shroud, let's be honest here. Okay, as as far as generators go, um, the easiest one is breaking wave. So just whenever you hit enemies, um, you, they take 10% more damage. Uh, you don't need this for spirit regen. You're literally just using it to proc your focus and restraint. If you guys don't know how focus and restraint works, 
you need to do damage with a spender, so a spender, so that's seven sided strike, costs fifty spirit, and you need to, that gives you fifty percent damage. You need to um, you know do damage with a generator, and that gives you another fifty percent damage. So you're just literally hitting with this once every um, five seconds just to get that buff up. Um, and yeah, obviously you're just doing one swipe, so you just get that ten percent damage buff. You can go if you want to be really hardcore, um, and you maybe you want to set up like really big crits and stuff. You can go things like assimilation. So your third hit, you have to go one, two, three, and then um, you'll you'll then get a lot of damage depending on how many enemies you hit. You can do that, but to be honest, sitting there and doing three attacks uh, when your seven sided strike has a one hundred percent uptime because you have Ingiom, you can literally spam it on cooldown when your Ingiom's procked. You know, doing three attacks. You're gonna lose so much damage doing that that it just it's just not worth it. Hence why I prefer to go with this. Um, we're also using exploding palm, impending doom. You'll never actually use this on the bar. This is just telling the set what to use. Um, currently, the set the set does not go off your highest elemental damage. You have to put EP on your bar. If I took this off, it would then just use unruined exploding palm, which does like no damage. Um, so yeah, you currently you have to use exploding palm. Um, on your bars and pending doom because it just does six thousand percent explosion damage which goes off you know every time you press seven side strike that goes off seven times six thousand percent damage seven times and when this if you're playing seasonal you can also use a lion's claw which gives you a 14 sided strike instead of the um instead of using an ingiom and then you can you know seven side strike 14 times and do six thousand three hundred percent damage 14 times and then obviously you know everything's dying so you're gonna get procking and you just Cold Rune OP, alright guys? Just putting it out there. Just letting you guys know. Okay, as far as passive skills go, um, the only one you really need to worry about is Beacon Eater. This is this is the main one. Beacon Eater. Reduce cooldowns by 20%. It's really, really nice. Um, as far as uh, other runes, I've just gone for pure damage. I've gone for Momentum, 20% damage, and Termination, 20% damage. Um, and But really, uh, you don't need... You don't need you don't need the damage. You can go with like if you if you like the utility of having more movement speed, you could totally take that off. I'd probably get rid of termination first and maybe go fleet footed. Um, you can really the 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 world's your oyster here. You can literally choose whatever you like. If you like Nita's experience, uh, you can go that. But I mean, using the Goldbrack combo, you don't really need the survivability. It's actually questionable to even put harmony in here, honestly. As um you know, you don't need harmony once you've got that gold wrap up, but. Uh, prior to gold wrap coming up, or say it drops off, um, you know, that extra bit of defense is really kind of helpful. That's why I like to run it. But anyway, those are the skills. Let's get into the gear. This is the kind of, uh, you know, the confusing part. Let's get into the gear. So, 2.3, you're going to have a cube in your base. Um, you, you unlock it by doing a short quest. And anyway, um, you get to get, have three extra item powers. One weapon, one piece of armor, and one piece of jewelry. I'm using the Flow of Eternity, so that means my 7-sided strike cooldown is reduced by 60%. So that's obviously, you know, major. That's what we're spamming. We need this. This is this is mandatory for the build to work. Uh, we're using Madstone. Your 7-sided strike applies Exploding Palm. So that's how we're applying the EPs whenever we 7-sided strike. And we've got the Convention of Elements. Um, so, you know, 200% damage and it cycles through the various elements. Um, it's kind of cool, and that means you get to see big crits. It's really nice. Uh, as far as weapons go... We're using um, Fist of Asterique. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but uh, let's just go with it. it. It increases your exploding palm damage by up to 100%. So it effectively doubles your damage because, um, you know, the cold rune only does explosion damage. So it literally, Fist of As doubles your 6,000. And, you know, it, 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 it literally just, because it's multiplying the base skill, is, and, and the majority of your damage, if, like 95% like plus of your damage, is exploding palm, um, you know, it's really, really big. It's a huge damage multiplier. Um, and then we're using an Ingyom on our offhand. So that means whenever we kill an enemy, our cooldown is reduced uh, by 10 seconds for 15 seconds. So that just allows us to have, you know, that crazy uptime on, um, you know, Epiphany. And it also means we can spam dash um, and move around and keep up with the group. And obviously, like, you know, it's, it gives us a crazy amount of mobility. And on top of that, it means when your Ingyom's procced, you can literally spam 7 sided strike. If you're going to play Season 4... Um, I would suggest replacing this with a Lion's Claw. Obviously, I haven't got a Lion's Claw yet because it's not out in the PTI yet. But I would be replacing Ingiom with a Lion's Claw if I had one for Season 4. Um, then you're going to want to use Yuliana's uh, boots. Uh, try to get Exploding Palm damage on them, obviously, because Exploding Palm is the majority of our damage. Yuliana's pants. Yuliana's chest. 
try to get seven sided strike damage on your chest. Um, it helps for both guardians. You know, when when a single target seven sided strike actually does decent damage. Um, you know, in an AOE situation, seven sided strike is basically insignificant. Um, but you know that increasing your seven sided strike damage does help your rift guardian kill. And same with shoulders, seven sided strike damage on your shoulders. And that's Yuliana's. So that's Yuliana's chest and shoulders, and then Yuliana's gloves. Yuliana's helmet. Obviously, you want this is important. Try to get a helmet that looks like this, one with exploding palm damage, crit, and um, you know a socket. Um, as far as necklaces go, you can use whatever you want. I've just gone for um, Haunt of Vaxo. It's not because it's the OP necklace or anything. It's just because it has. I mean, you look at it. It's got cold damage, crit, and crit. Basically, if you if you got a well rolled necklace, put that on. Obviously, one with um, you know a bit of utility. This one gives you a little bit of range reduction. Or if you had like a Hellfire amulet, you could get like another damage talent. Or if you had like a um, you know S of Johan, it would pull everything together, and then your exploding palms would ex you know cleave more targets. You know, there's a bunch of options for necklaces. But basically, the short story is uh, just use the best rolled necklace you have. Um, Braces, mandatory. You're going to use Gundo Gears. Uh, this is obviously really, really overpowered. It kind of makes the build what it is. Um, you know, because you 7 sided strike, it applies EPs everywhere. Um, then your 6 set detonates those EPs as you 7 sided striking. You kill one target. That, that, that target that dies then spreads EP to everything. And then they, you know, if, if one of those guys die, it sets off a chain reaction, everything blows up. And that's this is what's causing the whole screen to blow up. This is that, you know, this is this is what's doing it, guys. Gundar Gears, OP. Um, try and don't don't consider swap, swapping those out. This, you need these. You need these guys. You need these. Real talk. <laughs> All right. Uh, we're using gold wrap, obviously. So the gold wrap. Um, whenever you um, pick up gold, you gain armor, um, and that's what you need this for survivability. That's how you can go so glass cannon like full green gems and torment X with absolutely no survivability. We're not using spirit guards or anything. Um, this is this is what makes the build so fast because we're using gold wrap. With um, the boon of the hoarder gem, um, we've also got focus and restraint uh, uh, rings on. So we're going to be using, you know, you're going to be using your generator and your spender um, to proc those, and that just gives you, you know, they're both multipliers, so it just increases your damage output like crazy. Um, as far as the other two gems, we're using bane of the powerful. Um, Specifically because we don't need cooldown reduction, we don't need survivability. Um, straight up, more damage is good, and uh, you know you get 20% increased additive damage, and then 15% elite damage. I mean, Bane of the Powerful is not my favorite gem or anything, but um, for this particular build, it goes really well. It's quite swell indeed. Um, and Bane of the Trapped is just straight, um, you know, damage. It's straight, and it's a multiplier, so it's pure damage output. So when it says 36.9, that's how much damage you're getting. And um, yeah, it's really, really, really overpowered that gem. I should probably Lizard should probably nerf that. I'm pretty sure it's in like every single spec that exists. Let's be honest here. Check, I've got a little list here of things so I don't forget. We've done skills gear, paragon and oh paragon boys! Paragon. Okay, as far as paragon goes, um you potentially want maximum spirit. Uh this basically just increases your you know your, your redundancy as far as like spirit management goes so it means you have a higher cap to your spirit pool um, so it means you can't really, you can't, it means you've got like a longer time to react to press the, you know your epiphany uh, but you don't really need that, you can just go straight dexterity if you want to and of course you want to cap out your movement speed so your, your, your maximum movement speed is 25% so as you can see here I've got 14% in there plus 11% on my boots, 25% simple as um, as far as offense goes um, if you're using an Ingeom, then you don't need cooldown reduction. You just go crit, crit, then cooldown, then go um, attack speed. Attack speed is completely useless for the spec. It's only the generator, which is it's pointless. So yeah, but if you're using a Lion's Claw, then I would suggest going cooldown first, then crit, crit. Uh, as far as defense go, or resist, armor, life percent, then life regen. It's really simple. It's just a really that's the best way to go as far as survivability goes. Uh, you shouldn't need this though, I mean if you've got gold wrap and you've got gold, you're not going to need, you could literally just take all your paragon points out and you'd still be absolutely fine, um, you know, because you've got that, you know, infinite survivability from gold wrap. As far as utility goes, uh, area damage 100%, area damage is amazing with cleave skills, especially ones like big AoE skills, like exploding palm, um, just basically exaggerates them. On top of that, um, you know, resource cost reduction is all good, um, you know, it helps, it just means it's easier to maintain your spirit. You don't, you don't really need it, nor do you need the you don't need the life on hit because you're going to have the gold wrap, but I mean, yeah, area damage, then resource cost reduction, life on hit, and then gold fine. 
But that's pretty much the spec, guys. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the guide. I did, I did do a bunch of testing. I did do a bunch of testing to, to basically figure out what was the best setup. Um, and this does, this actually is faster than a Raiment, and it's faster than some Wuko um, for solo Torment X, boys. Torment X, that's T10 if you guys don't know. Um, farming, and uh, yeah, it's, it's really quite interesting that the Yuliana set actually has a bit of a niche. And it's kind of exciting that we have, it's actually got a use for the set. And uh, potentially, we're still early PTR. Um, at the moment, this is kind of underperforming the set. So they may even buff the set. And it's going to make this uh, spec even more powerful. Fingers crossed, guys. Fingers crossed. But otherwise, guys, thank you guys for watching. Um, peace out from me. Hopefully, uh, you enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to, you can follow my, follow my YouTubes. Follow my stream. I'll see you guys later.